I move straight on to save time. The next item of business is a statement by John Swinney on education reform. The Cabinet Secretary will take questions at the end of his statement, so there should be no interventions or interruptions. I call on John Swinney, Cabinet Secretary. Ten minutes or thereabouts, please. President Officer, in June, I set out our vision for education and our proposals for reform. The Government's clear ambition is to create a world-class education system, closing the gap between our least and most disadvantaged children and achieving higher standards for all. That is an ambition which is shared widely across the system and across this chamber. There are many strengths in Scottish education, but we also have to recognise that right now our system is still too variable. We want excellence in every school for every child. That is what these reforms are designed to do. They are based on the simple, well-evidenced premise. Those closest to children and young people, those who know them best, their parents, teachers and head teachers, are best placed to make decisions about their education. I recognise that if schools are to fully deliver on this leadership of learning role, then they must be supported by the entire education system. We must work together across school, local authority and national boundaries to provide that support. That is what the OECD called on us to do when they assessed our education system in 2015, and that is what our reforms will deliver. I am therefore pleased to be able to update Parliament today on the progress that we have made on our reform plans. As promised as part of the Next Steps report I published on the 15th of June, my officials, along with Education Scotland, COSLA, the Society of Local Authority Chief Executives and the Association of Directors of Education in Scotland, entered into a joint process to deliver this new way of regional working. In June, we set out the key functions of the regional collaboratives. They were to support teachers through dedicated teams of professionals drawing on Education Scotland staff, local authority staff and others to provide focus across the delivery of an annual regional plan and work programme and to deliver collaborative working, including sharing best practice. We've now reached agreement with COSLA on the collaboratives and these functions have been agreed to provide the enhanced support schools need in order to raise attainment and close the poverty-related attainment gap. Our partners in local government have agreed that the task we have set the regional bodies, that list of functions we set out in June, is the right way forward will deliver for our school pupils and support Scotland's teachers. Our schools and teachers need consistently excellent support to secure the improved outcomes we all want and Scotland's children and young people deserve. The Regional Improvement Collaboratives focus on meeting local needs, putting getting it right for every child at the heart of their work and delivering a relentless focus on improvement. They will ensure the provision of excellent educational improvement support for head teachers, teachers, managers and practitioners through dedicated teams of professionals. These teams will draw on Education Scotland staff, local authority staff and others. They will share expertise, innovation and best practice across the collaborative and will draw in knowledge from other regions where and when it is needed. They will ensure the provision of specialist support and advice across all eight curriculum areas with a clear focus on literacy, numeracy and health and wellbeing, reinforcing the approach set out by the Chief Inspector of Education in August 2016. They will also identify the particular areas for improvement within their region and ensure that interventions are put in place to address them. They will facilitate access to sector-specific support and advice, working with partners across the system to ensure that we get it right for every child. And they will build capacity and support in improvement methods, helping schools to implement key educational developments and learn from others, uh, other systems and research. Our programme for government set out our intention to bring forward an education bill this session. Our agreement with local government means that we will not have to wait on that bill to make progress on reform. I can tell Parliament today that the regional collaborators will be up and running this year, supporting our schools and teachers with pace and with focus. To deliver this, regional improvement leads will be appointed in six regions by the end of this month, and each collaborative will have a detailed improvement plan in place by January 2018. These plans will be bottom-up, drawing on the needs that schools identify and delivering a, cl a clear focus across all partners. They will bring rigour and structure to the work of the collaboratives and will empower local partners to identify local priorities and develop local practices. The leadership of the collaboratives will therefore be critical to enhancing the support that our schools receive. I have agreed with COSA that the regional improvement lead will be selected jointly by the Chief Inspector of Education and the local authorities that make up the individual improvement collaboratives. The improvement plans and the workforce plans will be formulated at local level 
but will require to be agreed with the Chief Inspector of Education. I am clear that these reporting arrangements will ensure there is a system-wide responsibility to support our schools in closing the attainment gap and providing excellence and equity for all. Education Scotland's announcement today that they are deploying their staff to work alongside teachers through the regional improvement collaboratives is a significant element in the early implementation of this reform. This is a radical and welcome step to ensure the resources of Education Scotland staff are used to create a cohesive and effective package of support to deliver improvement where it matters in our schools. This is the first time that such an approach has been taken and it will maximise the improvement resources available to our schools. I'm determined to ensure the formation of regional improvement collaboratives moves ahead with pace. Therefore, I will commission an external review of our progress in establishing these bodies and in assessing progress in fulfilling their potential firstly in April 2018 and then 12 to 18 months thereafter. The second aspect of this update is on teachers. I recognise that some councils face challenges in teacher recruitment, as do universities in recruiting teaching students, and I am committed to tackling these challenges. We are delivering our Teaching Makes People recruitment campaign, increasing the number of places available in teacher education programmes and funding a series of new routes into teaching. What is more, I believe that our commitment to work with the profession to enhance the teaching career structure will help attract and, attract and retain talented professionals. New and exciting courses have already been made available to attract teachers. Master's degrees allow teachers to work across both the primary and secondary sectors, primary qualifications with specialisms in science or additional support needs, and the provision that allows students to qualify across a 52-week period rather than the traditional model are just some examples of the new programmes. But we need to do more. We want to make a career in teaching more accessible to a wider range of graduates and help address the current recruitment challenges, particularly in priority subjects. I'm therefore pleased to confirm that we are today inviting new proposals for routes into teaching. These will support ambitious and innovative routes specifically for high quality new graduates or those considering a career change. It is essential, however, that all teacher education programmes, including new routes, are of the highest quality. So let me be clear that any new route will require both the involvement of a university to maintain academic rigour and accreditation also by the General Teaching Council for Scotland. They are the guardians of quality and all routes into teaching must meet their standards. The final element of this update on education reforms is in relation to inspection. Education Scotland announced this morning that they are significantly increasing school inspection with an increase of over 30% beginning in April 2018, building on the increase planned already for this year. This will strengthen the role of inspection as a crucial, crucial tool to support improvement. Not only does inspection provide assurance about the quality of education, it also identifies what is working well and what needs to improve. I am pleased that as a result of their inspection process, Education Scotland looks at how schools and establishments are working collaboratively with others and will share examples of what works. This is one of a range of improvement approaches that Education Scotland have announced today to enable them to reach every school every year through a variety of channels of approach. Presiding officer, I told Parliament in June that I was determined to put in place essential reforms to ensure that we create a relentless focus on improvement in our schools. I indicated that I would work with local government to achieve these aims. I am pleased that we have been able to reach agreement with councils and as a result can make swift progress on putting these reforms in place. We now have an agreed way forward on school education that will see all parts of the system, the Scottish Government, local councils and national agencies pulling in the same direction. A shared goal to raise standards and close the attainment gap, a single plan working together to support our schools and a clear vision that every child can reach their full potential. That is good news for teachers and great news for Scotland's young people. Uh, thank you, Cabinet Secretary. The Cabinet Secretary will now take questions on the issues raised in his statement. I intend to allow around 20 minutes for questions, after which we must move on to the next item of business. It would be helpful if those members who wish to ask a question would press the request to speak buttons now. And I call on Liz Smith to be followed by Ian Gray. Ms Smith, please. Uh, thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer, and thank you, Cabinet Secretary, for prior sight. Uh, could I ask three specific questions? Firstly, what is the estimated cost 
to the taxpayer of these changes, especially given the enhanced role that Education Scotland is apparently going to have and the new staffing and administration changes which are set out in section 5 of the interim report. Secondly, in relation to that enhanced role for Education Scotland and today's announcement that there will be increased number of school inspections, is this not just another reason why HMIE should be completely separate of Education Scotland so that it is not judge and jury at the same time with far too much conflicting work on its plate? And thirdly, you state that each uh, collaborative will have a workforce plan which will reflect, and I quote, national, regional and local priorities. Could I ask you to clarify, Cabinet Secretary, if you are a head teacher with specific proposals about how you want to spend your pupil equity fund, will you be required to have permission from the regional collaborative before it is spent, or will there be genuine devolution of power to the head teacher? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, on the first point that uh, Liz Smith raised on the costs, uh, obviously we are pooling together resources that are available within a number of different elements of the education system but doing that in a very focused way to ensure that schools are able to have access to and make calls upon the improvement resources that are available um, in a cohesive way, um, which is not currently the practice within Scottish education. So the resources that have been allocated from within Education Scotland um, will be focused um, increasingly at a local level, working with the resources that are available in local authorities and ensuring a coherent approach is taken. Now, obviously, there will be discussions to be had uh, with the regional collaboratives as they formulate their plans about the scale of their activities and the areas of particular activity. And obviously, the government will engage in those um, and assess very carefully um, any implications that emerge in terms of budgetary pressures as a consequence. On the second point in relation to um, the role of Her Majesty's Inspector of Education, I I have listened carefully to the, uh, the arguments that have been made on this point and I think it's important to um, put on the record one uh, vital uh, uh, aspect of my thinking in this respect. Um, I see the purpose of inspection to aid and to assist improvement within our education system and the whole purpose of the regional collaboratives, the whole purpose of the agenda that I've set out today is about reinforcing that focus on improvement. I've used the words a relentless focus on improvement. So for that reason, um, Her Majesty's Inspector of Education has an integral role to perform within Education Scotland, but it is a, a, an approach that has to be taken with the necessary uh, respect and regard to the independence of that inspection process. So what I want to make sure is that our education system is able to benefit and see the fruits of that scrutiny that is undertaken for inspection purposes. But it should be clearly understood that the purpose of that inspection is to aid and to assist the improvement journey within Scottish education. And finally, on pupil equity funding, my, my answer is, is simple. I want head teachers to be able to take the decisions about how to spend pupil equity funding. That's its purpose. And the head teachers that we engage with, and we engage extensively with head teachers about the uh, delivery of pupil equity funding, um, want to have a, a reasonable amount of guidance as to what will be effective utilization of their pupil equity funding, but they want to be able to take the decisions about how to allocate those resources. And that is my perspective as well. Now, I've already told Parliament that there have been a number of occasions where I have raised with local authorities my dissatisfaction with the way in which um, undue limitations are being applied to pupil equity funding. And I have no hesitation in reiterating my view uh, this afternoon that I see head teachers as being the ones who should be the decision makers on this point within a framework of guidance which is designed to help, not hinder them in their decision making. Ian Gray, to be followed by Ross Greer. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer, and thank you to the Cabinet Secretary for early sight uh, of his statement. The compromise uh, he has reached regarding regional collaboratives is welcome, uh, in that it leaves the leadership of these collaboratives accountable to local rather than central government. All credit then to councils and to Councillor McCabe in particular from COSLA uh, for working through this compromise. However, if the collaboratives are to succeed, as we all hope they will, in raising attainment, 
Like every part of our education system, uh, they need uh, more resources, not just pooled resources, uh, and they need an end to the cuts. Councils have helped with Mr Swinney's collaboratives. What help can he promise them in return with regard to education funding? It is also uh, welcome that Education Scotland promises more is inspections next year than this. But we are not going to be able to compare numbers with a decade ago since it transpires they have destroyed all inspection records pre-2008. Has the Cabinet Secretary taken them to task for this act of bureaucratic vandalism? And if not, why not? Cabinet Secretary. Um, first of all, can I say to Mr Gray that if he reads carefully the proposal that's been agreed between local government and national government, and I welcome the uh, discussions that I've had with Councillor McCabe and with others have been entirely fruitful discussions as part of this exercise. Um, the accountability in the formulation of regional improvement plans, the workforce plans and that relentless focus on improvement will not just be local accountability, it will be national accountability as well. Because the plans, the appointment of regional improvement leads and the, improve, the, the workforce plans will all have to be agreed with the Chief Inspector of Education. And that's a very important element of the arrangements that we've put in place. And that's essential to make sure that we have the clear and relenting focus on improvement. Now, Mr Gray asked me about resources for education, and I'm pleased that resources in education are increasing, not least of which because of the decisions that this government has taken in connection with the local authority settlement and also in connection with pupil equity funding. And I can assure Mr Gray that the government uh, will take appropriate decisions in relation to the funding of local authorities and pupil equity funding in its forthcoming budget statements later this year. Finally, in relation to the issue on um, Education Scotland records, uh, what I would say to Mr Gray is this. Um, Education Scotland holds uh, the most recent inspection report for every individual school that has been inspected. And that position was clarified um, at, uh, at the tail end of last week. Um, Education Scotland retains the ability to say when a school was last inspected by referring to paper-based records for each particular school. Some historical information was not held centrally and some el electronic information was deleted, not by Education Scotland, but by its predecessor body, Her Majesty's Inspector of Education. And information on individual schools inspected was not collated or retained centrally until after an internal audit recommendation in March 2006, which I would remind Mr Gray was before this government came to office. Now, I appreciate the importance of there being consistency in the information that's available in all respects, and I attach the highest um, uh, value to that uh, information, which is why the Chief Inspector of Education is taking the reasonable steps that I think he has taken to make sure that that information is readily available uh, to all who, who require that information. Thank you. I have 11 members wishing to ask questions. With your help and crisp questions and answers, I would hope to get through them all. I call Ross Gray to be followed by Mike Rumbles. Thank you. Uh, like colleagues, I thank the Cabinet Secretary for advance sight of his statement. The Scottish Government have met a number of times recently with Teach First. In England, it costs £38,000 to train a teacher through Teach First compared to £8,000 for the traditional postgraduate model in Scotland. Does the Scottish Government consider that good value for money, or does it agree that it would be an inappropriate cost and not an appropriate new route into teaching in Scotland? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, Mr. Mr. Greer invites me to go on to territory, which I think he probably well knows um, I should take very great care to go on to, since there is a procurement about to start. Um, and uh, obviously, I've set out to Parliament the details of that procurement, but I've set out to Parliament two very important foundations for that procurement. One, that any venture that comes forward must have an academic partner um, uh, recruited to it. And secondly, that any proposition that comes forward must be approved by the General Teaching Council of Scotland. And I assure Mr Greer and Parliament that the General Teaching Council um, applies very strong independent rigour to any proposal that comes forward. I've seen the, um, the scrutiny that has been applied to the new routes that have emerged uh, quite recently, 
and that is a rigorous process of challenge uh, by the General Teaching Council, and I can assure Mr Greer and Parliament that that will be the case um, in any uh, route that emerges uh, as part of the procurement the Government is undertaking. Mike Rumbles, followed by Claire Hockey. Can the Education Secretary uh, not see that Education Scotland cannot reasonably, de reasonably deploy staff to work alongside teachers through the Regional Improvement Collaboratives and Setting Policy, and at the very same time inspect how schools and establishments are working collaboratively? Education Scotland is set once again to mark its own homework. Isn't there a clear need, therefore, to ensure that ineffective practice is not reinforced and clearly separate out these functions, as my colleague Tavish Scott and others consistently have demanded. Cabinet Secretary. I think it come, this question comes back to the point, and, and I'm very happy to debate this further with Parliament, about the role of inspection. I see the role of inspection to assist us in driving improvement within our education system. For that reason, I think there is an, uh, an essential contribution that the inspection function under Her Majesty's Inspector of Education is able to make into the wider work of Education Scotland. I am very pleased with the progress that Education Scotland is making in responding to the challenge that I have set it to change its way of working and the organisation has made a number of really very substantial announcements of changes of practice in recent weeks. Um, that demonstrates the um, the independent direction of, indep of Education Scotland and I want to encourage that and also capture the information that comes from that to assist in improving Scottish education. Claire Hockey, followed by Liam Kerr. Can the Cabinet Secretary provide any reassurance over the role that local authorities will continue to play in the delivery of education and how he plans to maintain local democratic accountability? Cabinet Secretary. So, no, sir, local democratic accountability for education um, was never the issue at stake in these discussions. What was at stake was the, my desire to ensure the whole system was focused in a coherent way and a cohesive way on uh, leading improvement within the system. I, I'm very pleased that as a consequence of the discussions that I've had with local government, we've been agree, able to agree on that point. And, um, Obviously, the, the, the voluntary agreement of local government to the regional improvement collaboratives is an important signal of the support of local government to the direction that has been set out in the, uh, the, the paper that's been agreed between the government and local authorities and is, importantly, um, ensures that accountability for this work is shared between national and local uh, authorities. Um, but in a fashion that works together to benefit the needs of young people throughout our education system. Liam Kerr, followed by Ruth McGuire. Thank you. The Cabinet Secretary states that each improvement collaborative should draw on existing activity, connections and partnerships. If these are deemed to be working well enough, as the Cabinet Secretary said in the Chamber on 19th of June is the case for the Northern Alliance, what grounds are there for imposing a new structure with additional cost to taxpayers at a time when the public finances are already very tight? Cabinet Secretary. I can confidently say that Liam Kerr hasn't listened to a word I've said in my statement today, nor has he read a word of the agreement between national and local government, because uh, the, the Northern Alliance, and, I, and he also hasn't listened to a word I've said in Parliament for months, obviously, because the Northern Alliance is, in my view, a very good example of the type of collaboration that is in place. The, pr the, the problem is that it was the only collaborative at any sense of a developed proposition around the country. So what this agreement does is take the thinking, I don't know why Mr Kerr, as a North East of Scotland member, can't stand up and say, isn't it wonderful that the model of the Northern Alliance has been built upon and taken to other parts of the country, rather than finding something to have a whinge about. Now, what I would encourage Mr Kerr to do is to do a little bit of homework, like the First Minister encouraged his party leader to do in First Minister's questions last week, before he comes here and asks such ill-informed questions about what the government has just announced. Can I say, with respect, if we could have shorter answers, I'll maybe get some more folk in. That would be very helpful, Cabinet Secretary. Ruth McQuire, followed by Daniel Johnson. Can the Cabinet Secretary confirm that developing new routes into teaching is not about getting people into the classroom faster, but instead is about broadening the range of people entering the teaching profession? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, Presiding Officer, it's essential that we find different ways and uh, different mechanisms to encourage and motivate other people who might contemplate a career in teaching to take up that role. And 
The approaches that we've set out are designed to do that. Uh, they're designed to make sure that any individual who's teaching in our classroom is, has been, uh, uh, is doing so with the authority of the General Teaching Council, which is the, who are the guardians of quality within the education system. And um, the, the new routes that we're taking forward will have that uh, requirement at the heart of uh, their design. So I can give Ruth McGuire that, um, that assurance today and we will have that consideration very much in our minds as we come to our conclusions on any approaches that we take. Daniel Johnson, followed by Gillian Martin. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Uh, the Deputy First Minister was at pains to emphasise national accountability in his answer to Ian Gray and that the Chief Inspector would sign off on improvement plans. Can I ask what will happen if there's a disagreement between the Chief Inspector and the local collaboratives? And given that many of the concerns around his proposal... No, one, one question is sufficient. I want to get other members in. Cabinet Secretary. Well, the, the, the process is, is... The point I was making to Mr Gray was to essentially give a completeness around Mr Gray's comment. Mr Gray mentioned only local accountability. I was just giving a complete picture. And that is to ensure that there is a proper opportunity to, uh, to, to discuss and to challenge the formulation of regional improvement plans to make sure they will be effective in supporting the national improvement framework. Uh, so um, I would encourage a, 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 a collaborative and cooperative dialogue between the Chief Inspector of Education and the regional improvement collaboratives to reach agreement on what will be acceptable as plans that will deliver improvement within our education system. And that's the thinking behind the model of accountability that we've settled upon. Julian Martin, followed by Finlay Carson. Thank you, President Officer. Would the Cabinet Secretary agree with me that the regional impro improvement collaboratives must be bottom up and that the needs of our schools must be driving the regional plan rather than the plan driving the needs of our schools? Cabinet Secretary. President Officer, the purpose of these reforms is to make sure that schools have access to the support that will enhance their educational provision. So the approach that Julian Martin suggests is absolutely correct that we want to have um, schools in the driving seat of determining what are their needs, what are their requirements, and the services that are available and the support that's available from regional improvement collaborators should respond positively towards that. Finlay Carson, followed by James Dornan. Cabinet Secretary, you stated in response to Ross Greer and on page 7 of your statement that any new route into teaching would rightly require both the involvement of university and accreditation with the General Teaching Council for Scotland. In light of the recent encouraging comments Can from the Scottish Government... Can you please just ask your question? Can I ask uh, the, the Cabinet Secretary, what discussions are, being t are taking place with Scottish universities? Cabinet Secretary. Obviously, we've, I, I meet the, uh, the, the, the deans of the schools of education on a periodic basis to encourage developments in, in their own provision. Um, I know they are very actively engaged in, in these debates to ensure that we have an adequate supply of um, graduates coming into initial teacher education and we will continue that dialogue as we take forward. Obviously as we go into a procurement on this particular proposal our relationship has to be slightly different because some of the universities may have an interest in that uh, but I can assure Mr Carson of a very regular dialogue with the universities to advance their involvement in the important area of teacher education. James Dornan followed by Alison Harris. I welcome the announcement there will be more staff and regional collaboratives, but can the Cabinet Secretary expand a bit further on how he expects pooling resources to reduce the inconsistencies that we often see when it comes to education? Cabinet Secretary. What I'm uh, keen to ensure is that we have a much uh, wider exchange of good practice and strong practice within the education system. That is at the heart of collaboration. It's what the OECD told us in 2015 was a, a weakness of our education system. And I want us to respond to that as substantively as we possibly can do. So the, the, collabor the collaborators will be working together to share good practice and to ensure that that is widely disseminated across our education system. Alison Harris, followed by Colin Beattie. Thank you. When the OECD reported on the school system in Scotland in 2016, it made reference to the fact that it was very hard to measure educational success because of the absence of good data to measure progress in the curriculum for excellence. So what steps is the Scottish Government, along with Education Scotland, taking to collect this new data? Cabinet Secretary. We've um, already uh, embarked on that by the collection of pupil level data on the achievement of individual levels at uh, P1, uh, P4, P7 and S3 within our education system. 
uh, that is more comprehensive data than has ever been available in Scottish education before. Um, it is published every December and, of course, from December 2018, it will be informed by the proceeds of uh, standardised national assessments, which the Scottish National Standardised Assessments, which have now been um, rolled out in Scottish education and uh, took effect in late August of this year. And those um, assessments will help to form informed teacher judgments, which will be reported on every December. In addition to that, I will be consulting shortly on the framework for assessing our progress in closing the attainment gap. Uh, that has to be um, broadly um, uh, understood and accepted uh, to make sure that it commands public confidence. And I'll be consulting on that in the course of uh, the period ahead uh, to make sure that we have the right range of measures in place to assess our progress in closing the attainment gap. Very short question, Mr Beattie, and just squeeze you in, please. Can the Cabinet Secretary expand further on the ideas that the International Council of Education Advisers put forward recently on how to ensure students and their parents or carers are engaged and have a voice? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, Officer, there are some very good examples that Scottish education are now taking forward uh, as a consequence of the call within the National Improvement Framework to encourage greater pupil and parent engagement in the development of the school's agenda. Uh, I think the, uh, some of the projects that I see in place um, in local areas, um, I saw some very good projects that I referred to uh, following a, a visit to the Pathhead Primary School in, in Mr Torrance's constituency in Kirkcaldy, and uh, very good examples of uh, parental engagement in the learning process within schools, and obviously we share these good examples as widely as we possibly can do. Thank you. That concludes questions. Can I thank the Cabinet Secretary and all members as we manage to get all questioners in. A short uh, pause as we move on to the next item of business. <laughs>